الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We were just discussing the hadith of Ka'ab bin Malik رضي الله تعالى عن عفوا نعم Ka'ab bin Malik رضي الله تعالى عن who is the close companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and as being the close companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he stayed back in the battle of Tabuk for some time Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم had delayed his matter what that means is after the Prophet came back from the battle of Tabuk and everyone else came, the munafiqun, the hypocrites, they came and they asked the Messenger of Allah for forgiveness and they presented excuses. Out of all the people, there were three people who told the truth, one of them being Ka'ab bin Malik. And when Ka'ab bin Malik came and he told the truth, the Prophet ﷺ told him that you have told the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide your matter. And so for 50 days, these three sahaba, none of the other sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, None of them talked to them. None of them even looked at them. It became to such a point where Ka'ab bin Malik's best friend, Abu Qatada, wouldn't even greet him. Until the point where Ka'ab bin Malik climbed the wall and he jumped over this wall to talk to his friend Abu Qatada and Abu Qatada remained silent. And so Ka'ab said, I swear by Allah, do you not know me to love Allah and his messenger? And he remained silent until the third time he asked, Abu Qatada answered, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam that Allah and his messenger know best. And so tears came out of his eyes and he left this area and he was presented with other tests at that time which we covered in the last few weeks. Then after 50 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally accepts his tawbah, Allah accepts his repentance. And upon accepting his repentance, Ka'ab bin Malik who was overjoyed, he came rushing to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the person who delivered the acceptance of the repentance of Ka'ab to him, meaning the person who informed him that your, accept, your, your tawbah, your repentance has been accepted, Ka'ab bin Malik said, I had two clothes on me, I give both of them to that person. He says, I had nothing else in that day, but out of happiness that Allah has accepted my tawbah, and this brother, he was the means of me knowing this. Ka'ab bin Malik says, I took off my clothes and I gave them to him, and I had to go and borrow clothes from another brother so I could go meet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he came to the, mas the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you could see how happy he was. His face was radiant, and his face was shining like the moon. And the Sahaba, they knew this, that whenever the Prophet ﷺ became happy, their faces, his, the, the Prophet ﷺ, his face would shine like it was a piece of the moon. And so he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he talked to the Messenger of Allah. And in the end he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the only reason Allah protected me and the only reason Allah accepted my tawbah was because I remained truthful. When I had the chance to lie to you, I did not lie, instead I told the truth. And it's only from me being sincere to my repentance that for the rest of my life I will never tell a lie inshallah until I breathe my last and so he never told a lie he says until that day and he hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow him to stay safe from telling lies until the day he passes away and then he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses these verses are in surah uh, At-Tawbah in the 11th juz and it's important that whenever we recite the Qur'an, we understand the context as well. One right of the Qur'an is reciting it. And there is great reward in this. The hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, that a person who recites a letter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him, a, give him a reward. And a reward, a, a reward is multiplied by 10. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Alif, Lam, Meem is not a letter, but rather Alif is a letter, and Lam is a letter, and Meem is a letter. So for every single letter of the Qur'an which we recite, we are given great reward. This is one right of the Qur'an. Then the other right is to understand the Qur'an. It's not a simple matter of just reading the Qur'an every single day. This is very virtuous, it's very good. But we also have to create an intimate relationship, a connection with the Qur'an. Understand what Allah is telling us. Whether it's through means of a tafsir, a, a basic tafsir such as Ma'arif al-Qur'an or Ibn Kathir, or whether it's through the means of um, reading a, a translation. But we should make a habit that whenever we recite the Qur'an, there will be Qur'an we recite every single day, and we will educate ourselves to also understand the Qur'an. And the best thing a brother can do for this is study the Arabic language. Because one is a translation, and one is understanding the Qur'an in the language it was revealed. Study the Arabic language, master the Arabic language, and then you understand the Qur'an. And finally, the last thing is to propagate the Qur'an, to spread this message around, uh, and to show others the beauty of the Qur'an, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. Whenever we study the Qur'an, it's very important that we understand the reason certain verses were revealed. This is referred to as Asbab al-Nuzul. 
فسبب النزول is the reason a certain verse was revealed. So Ka'ab bin Malik over here, he is telling us that the reason these verses were revealed, it occurred right after my incident. That these verses were revealed regarding these people. He says, لَقَتَّابَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted the repentance of the Prophet, the Muhajirun, the, the ones who migrated to Medina, والأنصار, and the ones who helped from Medina. And over here, one important point, as you mentioned before, that the Prophet والسلام, they are free of sin. They do not commit sin. So Tawbah, when it refers to the Prophet والسلام, it refers to إِعْلَاءُ مَكَانَتِهِمْ Raising their levels. Because Tawbah literally means to return from one state to another. So the Prophet والسلام, when Allah accepts their Tawbah, they're returning from a great state to a greater state. From a good state to a better state. This is what it refers to the tawbah of the Prophet Allah says, I have accepted the tawbah of the Prophet and the muhajirun. Hajra literally means to leave. Those who left their land, they left their money, they left everything they had and they migrated towards al madinatul Munawwara. Wal Ansar, the helpers, the ones who were situated in Medina and they helped their brothers from Mecca that came to them. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He specifies not just every muhajir. In this verse, Allah says, I'm not speaking about every single migrant, not every single Ansari. Rather, there are specific, ansa, uh, specific people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specified. Who are these people? Those Ansari, those muhajirun who followed the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the time of immense hardship. And this refers to the Battle of Tabuk, as we've mentioned, where the Muslims were under the blazing sun and they hardly had any food to eat with them just uh, two or three bro Muslim brothers sufficing on one date. And one camel would be shared amongst 10 people. And so it was a very difficult time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he, accept, he has accepted their tawbah. Allah says, Allah has accepted their tawbah after a certain group from amongst them, they were about to go off track. Meaning because of the hardship they were about to turn around, they did not want to partake in this great journey. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept them strong and He kept them on this correct path. لِيَتُوبُوا And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their tawbah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a tawwab. When we refer to tawbah of the slave, it refers to the slave turning back to Allah. But tawbah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means Allah is accepting the repentance of his slave. Instead of punishing him, he will switch that word, forgiving the slave. Inna Allah huwa tawwab. Allah is the all accepting, ar-Rahim, and he is the most merciful. Wa'ala thalathati alladheena khullifu. Now comes the mention of the three sahabi, the three companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who stayed back, yet told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the truth. They didn't lie to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like the hypocrites. They told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the truth. Allah says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted the tawbah of those three that were left behind. Now just to hint at how important it is for us to understand, the reason a verse was revealed. If you looked at the translation, if someone was to look at this translation, for those sahaba who were left behind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their tawbah. What would come to mind at first? What does it mean for them to be left behind? It's a question anyone can answer, inshallah. Those three Sahaba who were left behind, Allah has accepted their tawbah. What does being left behind mean? What does it refer to? They weren't able to participate in the battle. That's what you initially think. But soon we're going to learn exactly what this means by taking it into the context of where the verse was revealed. He says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ To the point that the earth, as vast as it is, as great as it is, it became very constricted for them. It became very narrow for them. وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ And their own souls became very narrow and very tight. They had nowhere to go. They were put through this rough state. And they realized that there is no way, no refuge from Allah except towards Allah. Meaning the, mercy, the, the punishment and the wrath of Allah, the only way to escape that is to go back to Allah and ask Him for forgiveness. And these people, they remained on this state for how many days? For 50 days where everyone had left them. And some of them were crying in their houses, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah to forgiveness. And others were crying outside. But these people repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَلْجَأَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا Allah enabled them to return back to Him and so they turned back to Him إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالتَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
accepts the tawbah, he accepts the repentance of his slaves, he is the most merciful. Ya wa O you who believe, fear Allah, have taqwa, be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kunu ma'asadiqeen, and be with the truthful. Now let's look at the context in, this, in which this verse was revealed. Ka'ab says all three verses, all three of these verses were revealed together, including the last verse where Allah says, O you who believe, fear Allah, have taqwa, be aware of Allah, wa kunu ma'asadiqeen, and be with the truthful. This verse is telling us that tawbah is not simply repenting from a sin and going back to those old ways. When a person does tawbah, sincere tawbah, he tries his utmost best, his hardest to refrain from that sin because he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. He knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his actions. So he repents to Allah completely, entirely, sincerely, and then to help himself, to aid himself in this repentance, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ He remains with the truthful. He has good company. So when a person does tawbah, it's not sufficient. It is not sufficient to simply do tawbah and go back towards those bad friends. It's not sufficient to do tawbah and go back toward that, that evil land. We have to move, we have to change our company, you have to change your environment. And through changing this environment, through changing your company, it'll be easier for us to remain firm upon our tawbah. Allah says, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Be with the truthful, i.e. those who are truthful in their tawbah. Just as Ka'b bin Malik was truthful in his tawbah, and he was truthful to the Prophet wasallam. So from looking at the context of the verse, we understand multiple meanings and further meanings from this verse. These three verses were revealed. Ka'ab says, Wallahi ma an'am Allahu alayya min ni'matin qattu ba'da idh hadani lil-islam a'zama fi nafsi min sidqi rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, by Allah, aside from me accepting Islam and Allah guiding me to Islam, I don't know any great, I don't, I don't know any greater blessing, any greater favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me aside from him, except meaning any greater favor than this favor of Allah where he allowed me to tell the messenger of Allah the truth. Again, he's emphasizing the only reason Allah accepted my tawbah, my repentance, is because I was truthful to the Messenger of Allah. And after my Islam, this is the greatest blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. He says that I did not lie to the Messenger of Allah. If had I lied to the Messenger of Allah, I would have been destroyed, just as all those other people who came to the Messenger Allah of Allah and they presented excuses and they presented lies, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected, protected them. This is another lesson for us that regardless of what the situation may be, no matter how tight or how serious the situation may be, we must tell the truth. And this goes from small matters all the way to big matters. Tell the truth and be truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Himself will make a way out for you. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy those who lied? How did they perish? He says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ قَالَ لِلَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا حِينَ أَنزَلَ الْوَحْيَ شَرَّ مَا قَالَ لِأَحَدٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He spoke about, about those who lied to the Messenger of Allah, He used the worst words He has said to anyone. He was very severe, regard, regard, very severe regarding these people. فَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ Allah Almighty states, سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ إِذَا قَلَبَتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لِتُعْرِضُ عَنْهُمْ that when you go back, O Messenger of Allah, when you return back to Medina after Tabuk, these people, these munafiqun, these hypocrites, they will take oaths that, O Messenger of Allah, I couldn't make it for this reason. O Messenger of Allah, I couldn't make it for this reason. عنهم, so you don't hold them accountable. عنهم, Allah says, let them go. عنهم, let them go. إنهم, religious, they're dirty people. They're impure. They're, they're filthy people. جهنم, their abode will be the hellfire. Jaza'am bima kanu yaksibun. This will be their punishment for what they earned themselves. Kasaba literally means to earn. That's why a person, if he goes out to work, or to work, he's doing iktisab, he's earning money. Allah says they earned this themselves. The hellfire will be their abode. They come and they lie to the Messenger of Allah and they hope to deceive Allah and they hope to deceive Allah and His Messenger. Their, hell, their abode will be nothing but the hellfire. يَحْلِفُونَ لَكُمْ لِتَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ These people come to you and they take oaths in hope that you will become happy with them. You will become pleased with them. They are scared of the people around them. Allah says, فَإِن تَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ Even if you become pleased with them, which of course the Messenger of Allah will not be, but even if you become pleased with them, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be pleased with these wretched people. These were the words which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to with, uh, referred to these liars with. So Ka'ab says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe and he used very, uh, very, very, very harsh words describing these liars. Just because I was truthful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me from this. Qala Ka'ab, Ka'ab says, Kunna khullifna ayyuhal thalatha, that we three were left behind. 
Now remember I said earlier, when we think, what does it mean to be left behind? We all thought it referred to the battle. Now we're going to see exactly what this verse means. He says, what it means to be left behind, we three were left behind from those people who when they came and they brought excuses to the Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah accepted their excuses. They pledged allegiance, the Messenger of Allah said, may Allah forgive you, and he accepted their hand. We were left behind from these people. As for us three, the Messenger of Allah delayed our matter. He delayed our matter until Allah Himself made a decision. And that decision of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala was those three who were left behind. And Ka'ab clarifies to be left behind did not mean we stayed behind from the battle, but it refers to over here as that. Despite these people going to the Messenger of Allah and presenting their excuses, the Messenger of Allah accepted the excuses of the hypocrites. But for these three people, they were left behind. And for 50 days, they were left behind. And they did tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point that the earth became restricted for them. And their own selves became constricted until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally accepted this tawbah. Muttafaqun alayhi. This hadith is mentioned both in Bukhari and Muslim. Now he goes on to mention some other benefits of the narration. In some uh, paths of this narration, which is the path of Imam Nasa'i rahimahullah, that the Messenger of Allah left for the Battle of Tabuk on the day of Thursday. And in, in, in Islamic, the Islamic calendar, the day begins from Maghrib and ends at Maghrib. Right? So for instance, right now, because Maghrib has already occurred, today is not Today is not a Wednesday. Islamically, Yawm al has already begun. Laylatul Khamis, the night of the, uh, of, the, of the fifth, meaning the night of Thursday, has already begun. And tomorrow will be Yawm al -Khamis. Nonetheless, he says, the Prophet sallallahu he would love to go out on the Thursday. Meaning on the day of Thursday, this is when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would love to go out. And again, Yawm al-Khamis refers to the day. It doesn't refer to the night. So we make this habit whenever we go for travel, whenever we go anywhere, inshallah, we go on the Thursday, on the day of the Thursday. And this is actually one of the reasons that the brothers in Tabligh, it's better for them to leave on Thursday. This is the benefit behind this. Many times brothers ask the specific method, and this, this specific um, uh, three days and 40 days and whatnot, where is it established from? This is a long discussion, inshallah, at another time, or maybe after the talk we can discuss this. But generally speaking, a lot of the things mentioned in Tabligh, they are taken from Hadith. A general light. It doesn't mean it's in the Hadith in and of itself. But these ideas fulfilling these sunnahs are taken from the hadith of Bukhari, of Muslim, and many other books. So he says, وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ In another narration, وَكَانَ لَا يَقْدَمُ مِنْ سَفَرٍ إِلَّا نَهَارًا فِي الضُّحَى Whenever the Prophet ﷺ would come back from travel, he would only come back at daytime fi duha when the sun was bright and there was light everywhere. Duha literally means, refers to that time and day when the sun becomes bright and people normally go out for work. And this is actually one of the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah have encouraged us to, to pray Salat al-Duha. Because when a person is going out for work, where is his mind? His mind is towards the money, is towards work. Allah says, even in this state, take five minutes off, take two minutes off, and come pray two rak'at before me, come pray four rak'at before me. To remind yourself of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in this state of work. فَإِذَا قَدِمَ Whenever the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would return from me, a battle, Bada Abil Masjid, the first thing he would do is go to the masjid. And I mentioned last week that this, this, this refers to any travel. That any time we come back from our travel, the first thing we do, whether it's for vacation, whatever the purpose it is, we should come back to the, mas the masjid and we should pray two rak'at. The Messenger of Allah would pray two rak'at, and then he would sit in the masjid. He mentions 40 benefits which can, be uh, uh, which can be extracted from this hadith and because we've already mentioned them during the translation inshallah we we'll continue on to the next hadith. وَعَنْ أَبِي نُجَيْدْ عِمْرَانِ بِنْ حُسَيْنِ الْخُزَاعِي رضي الله تعالى عن Imran bin Hussein al khuzai This person, Imran bin, Hus uh, bin, bin Hussein al khuzai he brought Islam in the Am of Khaybar, the seventh year after Hijrah. And after accepting Islam, he was an amazing Muslim. He went out in many battles with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala and Umar radiallahu ta'ala actually took Imran bin Hussein and he sent him to Basra. Basra is a place in, in Iraq. Umar radiallahu ta'ala and sent him there and he said, go there and teach the people fiqh. Teach them understanding of this religion. And this was something which Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who did that whenever a new country or a new city would be made or conquered, he would send a sahabi there. 
he would send a companion of the Prophet ﷺ to that conquered city so that they could teach the people fiqh. For instance, when it came to Kufa, which is also a place in Iraq, the, the Prophet uh, Umar ta'ala an, he sent the Sahabi Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud towards Kufa just to teach the people fiqh. That was all, no political matter, nothing else. His job was literally to sit in the masjid and as students would come in, he would teach them fiqh. He sent Imran bin Hussein to Basra and many other Sahaba, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself sent Mu'ad bin Jabal to Yemen and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. The Sahaba would be distributed and their job was to teach the people fiqh, to teach them understanding of this religion. And this includes the meaning of ahadith, the meaning of tafasir, meaning the, the, the meanings of the Quran, and likewise understanding the laws which apply to us. A lot of us, we partake, we participate in business. Umar radiallahu ta'ala and said, I will not let anyone enter the marketplace until he understands fiqh. Why? Because you need to know what is halal for you, what is haram for you. You need to know what Allah has legislated, what Allah has permitted for you, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. So Imran ibn Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and he narrates that a woman from Juhayna, Juhayna is a tribe, and to be specific from the tribe of Ghamid, she came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hubla min zina in the state that she was pregnant from zina. Imagine a person comes to you, or a person comes in the masjid, and he goes to the office and he says, I've committed so and so sin, and I am pregnant from that sin. Many of us, and it's unfortunate, we will turn away from them. And if we won't turn away, we'll give them a dirty look. And I, I remember I had a friend, he has passed away now. Uh, may Allah have mercy upon him. He, he, it was Jumu'ah one day, and I was coming down the stairs from my building, coming towards the masjid, and I see him and his friend on the staircase. I'm like, why don't you guys come to the masjid? He's like, every time we come, we just get dirty looks. Everyone looks at us like we're gangsters, like we're bad people. We don't belong over there. That's what he said. Imagine if you were welcoming, if you were warming. And you know, one more thing we have to mention over here is unfortunate, but there is still racism in our community. When it comes to our, our people from our country, people from our background, we're more open to them. We smile at them. And on the other hand, when it comes to other people, we turn away from them, we frown from them. For what reason? Because they have a different color? Because they come from a different country? This is completely against the teachings of Islam. Because they've done some wrong, well, which one of us hasn't done wrong? Of course, if a person is going to go outside and he's going to commit sins outside and he's going to show everyone his sins, I'm not saying go to them and say, Mashallah, you're doing a very good job. He can be doing a bad job. And he 100% he is. But at the same time, we have to open our hands. And we tell them, this isn't the good. Don't, don't double down on your religion where when it comes to any bad deed, we don't correct people. No, we enjoin good and we forbid evil. We correct them, this is wrong. But with respect, with love. Look, this woman was so comfortable with the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Sahaba treated her, that she was able to come to the Messenger of Allah and say this. And look at the Iman she had. She knew the punishment for this. When a person is confesses to committing zina, which is uh, adultery, or for, uh, adultery, they will be taken towards a process where they will be stoned. They will be stoned to death. And she knew this punishment. Yet because she was so sincere in her faith and her repentance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, she was able to come forth and tell the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And on this point, I once asked my teacher that how often in the Prophet's time would someone actually be stoned for this action? How often would a person be punished? And he replied, as often as they confessed. Meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and whom were so pure that the only time they would be held accountable for such an action is when they themselves, they went out of their own way because they felt guilty that Allah was watching them and they went to the Messenger of Allah and they asked the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, I've committed this sin, please impose the had upon me, Implode, Im, impose the legal penalty upon me. And this is exactly what happens in this scenario. فَقَالَتْ She said, Ya Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah, أَصَبْتُ حَدًّا I've committed a grave sin which is in need of a legal penalty which is the uh, stoning uh, to death for the married uh, couple or the married person who commits zina. فَأَقِمْهُ عَلَيَّ And again, for this, it's not simply a matter of someone accusing another person of this. It's a very detailed process which takes place where you have to have at least four witnesses. Meaning four witnesses need to have seen the action occur. And once they've seen the action occur, then they can go to an Islamic court. And then an Islamic court will look at those four witnesses. And if one of those four witnesses is weak, or he might be a liar, or he is not worthy of giving testimony, his testimony won't be accepted. And if you bring less than four witnesses to an Islamic court and you accuse someone else, the judge will actually lash this person. Because just like Islam is very serious about the about the, the uh, about hifdul uh, nasal, protecting the progeny, protecting the lineage, Islam is also very serious about hifdul izza, protecting the respect of people. If someone accuses someone wrongly, they themselves will be lashed. And this is the justice of Islam that it's not towards one extreme, neither towards the other extreme. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his, his wisdom, he has sent down these divine commands and these divine commands will never change. 
right? One thing is that if someone's not in an Islamic state, that these divine commands are not held out. They are not uh, imposed. But if someone is in an Islamic state, in an Islamic government, then these divine commands will be held out and they will never change by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I said, O Messenger of Allah, this woman said, I've committed a grave action, I've committed zina. فَأَقِمْهُ عَلَيَّ So this had the like, legal penalty imposed upon me. فَدَعَى نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَلِيَّهَا فَقَالْ أَحْسِنْ إِلَيْهَا The Messenger of Allah called her guardian and he said, treat her well. Look, this is a person who is confessing to such, confessing to such a great sign. The Prophet didn't look away, he didn't make a bad face, he said, treat her well. Take care of her. فَإِذَا وَضَعَتْ When she gives birth to this baby, فَأْتِنِي بِهَا Then bring her here. For this time, don't don't speak ill about her, don't speak bad about her, don't give her, don't taunt her, don't make fun of her, don't mock her, treat her well. And this is the prophetic teaching that no matter what sin a person does, no matter what sin a person does, we are to treat them well. Because perhaps they may be better than us. Perhaps their tawbah is more beloved in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than our tawbah. Despite this, if a person does a sin in open, it does not mean we begin treating them like an imam or begin treating them like a scholar. Now, if a person is doing a sin openly and he's happy about the sin, he boasts about the sins, the scholars at certain times, they shouldn't even say salam to him. This is in the Islamic teachings. Because if the scholar says salam to him, what does that mean? The scholar is saying your sin is fine. So we have a balance. On one hand, we don't look down upon that person. We welcome him with open arms. But at the same time, if in the community, it's understood that a person is known for his bad actions, then we don't treat that person as if he is de deserving of great respect. And that whenever he walks by, for instance, we should all rush towards him and say salam. No, if a person is doing actions outside, then he himself is putting himself, he himself is asking others to judge him. But we don't look down upon this person. We don't wish evil for this person. We wish good for him and we make dua for him and we smile him. We smile at him. The Prophet says, Ahsin ilayha, treat her well. Fa'idha wada'at. When she, be, when she uh, gives birth to this baby, fa'atini then bring her. Fa'ala, so this person did so. فَأَمَرَ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَشُدَّتْ عَلَيْهَا ثِيَابُهَا The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded that her clothes be tied because when a person is being stolen, obviously they will move around so if the clothes are not tied together, they will open up and the aura, the, 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 the private parts might show so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded that the clothes be tied ثُمَّ أَمَرَ بِهَا and then he gave the command فَرُجِمَتْ and so she was stoned ثُمَّ صَلَّى عَلَيْهَا and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم himself prayed Salatul Janazah now Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he sees this and he thinks to himself, this woman committed zina. If the Prophet himself is praying Salatul Janaza, he is praying for the forgiveness of this woman. So the Messenger of Allah asked Umar radiallahu, Umar radiallahu ta'ala and asked the Messenger of Allah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, to salli alayhi, you're praying Salatul Janaza for her. Waqad zanat, even though, she, even though she did this action, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, لَقَدْ تَابَتْ تَوْبَةً لَوْ قُسِمَتْ بَيْنَ سَبَعِينَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ لَوَسِعَتْهُمْ she turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a manner and she performed such a tawbah that were it to be split and distributed among 17 of the people of Ahlul Madina. And the scholars, they said the reason Ahlul Madina was specified because there were hypocrites there as well. Meaning if these hypocrites did tawbah the way, they, the way she did, it would be sufficient for them. If the people of Madina did tawbah the way they did, Despite these hypocrites turning away from Allah, but if they truly turn to Allah the way they, the way she did, she gave her soul away for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her very life, she came and she sacrificed her life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone did tawbah in this manner, it would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept that tawbah and he would forgive them for whatever sin they may have committed. Rawahu Muslim, Imam Muslim narrates this hadith. There are two more ahadith left until the end of the, uh, the chapter of Tawbah, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah we will discuss this uh, in the upcoming week.